and we're back for another interior cleaning. This is on a 2014 Ford Focus. The customer had contacted me on Saturday. There's birds up there, uh, my apologies for that noise. The customer contacted me on Saturday. I bucked them in for Sunday. I went to go pick up cash from the customer the day before uh, at 9 a.m. I met the customer up at 10 a.m. And it took me, I think at this point, I did it a few weeks back, I think it was about five-ish hours that it took on the Ford Focus to clean the interior. Now this interior was very bad. I would say it's up there with one of the worst interiors. Definitely not the worst, but it's definitely up there top five worst vehicles that I've done. Now the customer said that he hasn't had a detail in three years, but from the looks of it, it's more of a, like how he maintained it and how it just got to that point. So even if he did detail it three years ago, it would have been in that bad situation either way. And this was a great learning experience for me because I brought my brother along with me. This isn't the first time he's come with me, but this is the first time in a long time. And you do pick up a few things where you don't actually cut your work half in half because you have someone with you. Uh, you have to learn how to work efficiently. You have to get the same tools and products. If you just have one upholstery brush or one vacuum or one of everything, then you're gonna have to see you know, what part do you work on to have those tools and what part do I work on to have these tools to where we can still work uh, efficiently without getting into the ways where we're gonna need each other's tools and products. So you never, you're not gonna cut it in half. Literally, the first get go, uh, maybe a few, you know, out an hour or so. Um, but you definitely do work less in terms of that person doing that part. You're doing something else, so you do work less, but not so much. Uh, get it done faster. Obviously, over time, you get better and more efficient, and you're able to finish those vehicles much quicker because you have more tools and you work better in harmony. But when you're first starting off, you do gotta get, catch that rhythm of how you work most efficiently. And unlike the other videos, I didn't record that much. I didn't record the seat cleaning. I didn't record that many door panels because it was dirty, so I knew I had to, at the speed of the time and actually get it done. So uh, not the most intensive recording video that I've done uh, for how dirty it was. Usually when it's really dirty, I wanna record more, but because it was really dirty, I needed to work. So there's just a, a, a pros and cons to me trying to film. So I charged, I believe, again this was a few weeks back, I believe I charged $240 if I'm not mistaken. This was a few weeks back. Uh, and again, it took me five-ish hours, I believe, to complete this vehicle. So for you guys that love to know how much someone charges, that's the price. And remember, with this type of vehicle, when, it, when you have a very trashed interior or exterior or engine bay or wheels that you're trying to polish or paint that you're trying to polish, and you gotta set the, the customer's expectations where they need to be. Do not say, you know what, I'm gonna clean every single last stain. I'm gonna try my very best and I'm gonna get all of them out. No, of course you're gonna try your best and you're gonna clean it to the best condition possible, whether it's removing scratches, whether it's cleaning an engine bay, whether it's polishing wheels, whatever the case may be. But don't set yourself up saying you're gonna work this huge miracle and you're gonna remove every stain and every scratch and every blemish from the vehicle. No, you gotta set the customer's, customer's expectations to what you're actually gonna deliver to set yourself up to set yourself up for success when you're actually done with the vehicle. And if you are looking to start your detailing business, you need to get customers in order to be a business. So this guide right here will help you get your first couple customers, maybe three, maybe five, maybe 10. You can make 100 bucks, 500 bucks. It's really up to you how much you wanna make and how many customers you wanna get. But with this simple strategy, you can get customers within a few days. It doesn't take too much work and it'll help you get that traction going to build that motivation to keep on pushing. So this guide, download, download it in the description box down below by clicking that link, downloading it, and actually put it to use and apply it to your life to actually see results. So now let's get into the video. All right, so this is what we're working here. It's pretty trashed, as you can tell. He said the last time it's been detailed, it was three years ago, but honestly, that's a bit irrelevant because it's just really, really trashed. So let me see, get a close up here. There's, I mean, this is, you can see the, this is, this can automatically come off, I'm assuming, because it's just, it's just their dirt and gunk and stuff. So this is actually really, really bad. Not, and I mean, at this point, guys, we're not going for perfect by any means. Get that thought out of your head. We're going for a hundred time improvement but that's not gonna be anywhere near perfect. Look at this beautiful condition. Don't you just love being a detailer and being able to work on such miraculous vehicles with such a great challenge to really make you appreciate what you do. I prefer, I like doing interior. So this, I don't, I mean, I don't know why. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I do enjoy doing paint correction. That's also very pleasing as well. Uh, but for me, I, I mean, I enjoy interiors. This is nothing. I mean, I know a lot of you guys hate interiors, but I don't mind it. I like doing interiors. I like doing exteriors. It really doesn't matter to me. Um, 
But yeah, I do prefer interiors, definitely. But paint correction is definitely fun too. Look at all that yumminess down there. Delicious. Wonder what drink was that, you know? The seats are also amazing. There's, there's stained everywhere. There's pet hair everywhere, as you can tell here. There's gonna be quite a bit of work to be done here. Let's zoom in here, beautiful. This can't be any better of a challenge for me. You got pet hair in there, pet hair here, pet hair there, crumbs there, crumbs this. Beautiful right there, beautiful right here. More beautifulness right here, more pet hair. Absolutely wonderful, I love it. Beautiful. And I mean, all this is just, you can just tell there's a, there's a layer of dirt. I mean, I don't know if it fits on, on camera so well, but there is a pretty much a big a, a, a layer of dirt that you can literally agitate off. So it's gonna look really good once we're done and that's why they called us and they don't mind paying a premium for these services because they know we do great work and they know this is an extreme condition and they don't mind paying top dollar to get it looking the best that it can get. Beautifulness, absolutely beautiful. It makes me happy seeing this. All right, as always, we got the workbench set up. Everything that moves around around this detail will be placed on this workbench, so I know where everything's at at all times. Oh, let's not forget the beautiful floor mats. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So that's gonna turn out great. Oh, what's this? Lovely, what is this? Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so first step of this detail is, obviously there's so much stuff. Ooh! trying to push the seat forward Ugh, there's so much stuff that I just pure up trash so what we're gonna do is first uh, start we're gonna push the seats forward and then pick up all the trash from the back side of the seats that way the the, the entire back side is exposed so the seats are come through the back side and start picking up that trash because we're gonna move in a systematic process so we're gonna push the seats forward we're gonna pick up all this trash this obvious trash that we don't want to vacuum just because it's so obvious trash and it's big chunks so we're gonna throw that out the way just you know get the the straws the wrappers the big wrapper, we're gonna get that out of the way. We're gonna move the seats back and then do the same process for the front of the vehicle. This may not seem like a big deal, but you wanna be very careful when you are reaching in areas that you can't see around the vehicle, whether it be under the seats, whether it be in cup holders, whether it be in the pockets of the door panels. I've been, and not just myself, but I've seen other detailers get deep, deep cuts on their hands, arms, fingers, because they run their hand uh, across a, 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 a uh, uh, metal object, broken glass, um, nails. So be very careful when you're reaching into any part of the vehicle because you're not going to be sure of what's underneath or under certain parts of the vehicle. Alright, now that we moved everything, we removed those big pieces, we're going to start vacuuming with a thorough vacuum, of course. Uh, there's a lot of pet hair here, so we just want to get a majority of the pet hair. We're going to revisit this again, but this is just the initial pass to get a good vacuum in. So we're gonna knock off as much of the pet hair to the ground, or at least loosen it up. So when we go and actually do, um, and we actually do start vacuuming, or we do, yeah, we do start vacuuming, it comes off much easier. We're not going for perfection by any means, because we're gonna do another pass later. But we will start with a thorough pet hair removal of sorts. And we'll push everything down. And make sure that when you push it down, it falls here, and then you push it here, and then this doesn't happen, and it stops right there. You see that? Yeah, and then actually push it in. And this is just a quick example showing you to push all those um, hairs down with the pet hair brush. And then once so, once you do that, while you vacuum, if it's not coming up, just come back with that brush, just agitate it, and then start vacuuming. But yeah, it's just, you're gonna have to keep that brush with you as you as you vacuum. And in this part, I'm just gonna be brushing off the uh, debris with the upholstery brush from the carpets. Uh, you could just go straight into vacuuming, but because they're so matted down, there's gonna be a lot of stuck on the debris here. And here you can actually see that it took off that, that gunky stuff with the brush itself. So then I'm gonna move on to the pet hair brush, and I actually don't start cleaning these floor mats until later on the day. Um, I wasn't initially start here, but because I didn't have the vacuum and the steamer wasn't ready, I actually just brushed them off right now and I actually cleaned them later down the detail. As I was working on the floor mats, uh, he was vacuuming the interior. As I said earlier in the video, we're not going for 100%. We just want to get a good amount of the debris and trash out. That way we can work on the carpets 
and we're not dragging around dirt and debris, wrappers and such all across the interior while we're trying to work in it. And some people tell me they take hours to vacuum. My tip is just get it done as quickly as you can. And now moving on to the door panel. I only uh, filmed myself recording this first door panel as this was the dirtiest, believe it or not. Um, all the door panels weren't that bad. But I'm using the big upholstery brush, the small bristle brush, super clean, diluted 10 to 1, and two of those detail buddy brushes, as long as with one or two towels to mop everything up. Remember, if you're working in the heat, you can't let the product sit there that long and you can't work that big of area because if it is hot, it's gonna dry up rather quickly. I believe in this situation, it wasn't that hot so I could work a decent section, but keep in mind, if it's hot, don't work that, long, that big of a section and don't keep the product on there too long because it will dry a lot quicker, causing you to do more work to get that out. Now I'm going to finish with this middle section by mopping it down, using the towel to get inside those controls and use a big brush to get any existing water out. Then I'm gonna finally move to the bottom section, which uh, again, using the same process with super clean 10 to one, as I'm sitting with the brick brush and using the smaller brush to get into the more tighter areas. Now I could use a steamer here, but it wasn't that bad enough to like, there was nothing really stuck on there that I needed that heat and pressure to break off. So not just the brushes itself, were strong enough to get the, the desired results that I was looking for. All right, and that's a quick one on the door panel. Now the thing is, I do have help right now, but I can't, you know, when, when you get help, it's, it's not gonna cut you in half 50%. Why? Because that person does as skilled as you, as fast as you, you don't have the same, you don't have double the tools and products, so you can't literally mirror each other because you don't have two of these, you don't have, two sets of these, you don't have two sets of everything, you don't have two sets of a steamer, of a polisher show, you don't really 50% cut it in half, 30, 25%, that makes more sense. So now I'm gonna move on to something else while he does something else. Uh, it's not the most efficient because again, lack of products and just lack of working together. All right, so now we established a little process that we're gonna follow. For now, he's gonna be working on the, um, on the side dashboard, he's gonna be working from the top going down. Because uh, everything everything needs to be agitated. Every, there's such a thick layer of dirt everywhere So you can't just wipe it down. You have to agitate it with a brush to really get it off um, So he's gonna be agitate the dashboard working down working from there to there to there then work on the center console So he's gonna be using the small bristle brush and the upholstery brush up here Then he's gonna be using these two softer brushes on the center on the center console control panel thing Whatever you want to call it here because uh, those bristles will be a little bit too aggressive for these little knobs here as they'll, uh, he'll, I mean, you have a higher chance of like taking off the actual lettering and stuff, um, at least in my experience. So these are very soft. I already tested on it, so it works great. So these two softer brushes are gonna be for this, and he's gonna use more aggressive brushes up there because it does need uh, some thorough cleaning. Um, so that's what he's gonna be doing. And then I'll move, I'll move on to the uh, to the carpets. I'm gonna use the steamer and the polisher. As I said, when you if you ha if I had double everything, double polishers, double steamers, double poster brushes, double sets of brushes, double sets of everything. We could work a lot better in tandem, um, but we're still figuring out a good, uh, you know, uh, uh, tandem team on how to tackle vehicles, uh, as, as it is a much different dynamic than just you. Um, so now I'm gonna work on the steam. I'm gonna use the steamer and the polisher to take care of the carpets. All right, and now we're back at the floor mats. Uh, so now this is a few hours later and I'm gonna actually vacuum it because I didn't get a chance to vacuum them earlier. And I'm gonna use the steamer to break off those main areas by just pulling the trigger and just trying to break up as much as I can with the steamer. Next, I'm gonna spray super clean pretty liberally on the uh, on one side. It's a pretty big floor mat, so I wanted to, I wanted to work section by section. Uh, that way I get enough uh, time for the product to work and the product isn't drying on me before I get to agitate it. So I'm gonna work one section to uh, agitate the carpet, then I'm gonna follow it up with su super clean and then more steaming action. Next, I'll use the mop, the, uh, the towel to mop up the steamer uh, residue and the cleaner residue. And then I'll repeat that process throughout the uh, floor mat and basically the interior. And there we go, that's a 50-50 on the floor mat. Now it's just uh, time to get back and do the exact same method on the other side. And a lot of people tell me that I should get an extractor. Yes, in an ideal world, I, in an ideal world, I would love to have both an extractor and steamer, but just due to the compact size of my vehicle, 
how uh, limited space I have. I have to just, uh, if I have to choose one of the two, I'm gonna go with a steamer. But eventually, yes, I would love to have both a steamer and extractor to get just you know, even better results because an extractor will do does have its place obviously in interior cleaning. But again, if you have to make me choose one, I will always go with the steamer. And on this floor mat, I had already vacuumed it. I just didn't show that part to not be boring. But same process, breaking up the stain with the steamer. Next, and this is a pretty small floor mat. I can do the entire floor mat in one pass instead of breaking it up into sections. And in this floor mat, that, I couldn't get that stain out. I, I was able to reduce it a bit, but it, it definitely didn't come out um, all the way as the other stains were coming out on the other floor mats. And that's the thing you're gonna run into where some stains are just not gonna come out. I tried using a different product here, uh, Pure Power. It, it typically does help reduce the stains. It's a lot stronger than your typical APC. But in this situation, again, it did decrease it a little bit, but the stain was still there. I made multiple passes and it just wasn't really budging on me. So I'll just leave it at that because again, I wasn't going for perfect, just a huge improvement and I was already achieving those results. All right, so at this point we have, uh, we've cleaned all this part for the most part, we'll touch, it, touch up uh, later on. But we have, for the most part, cleaned that, we cleaned the carpets. The floor mats um, cleaned some of the door panels. So now I took everything out of the vehicle. I moved the workbench over here um, just because the owners left. So we gave us more room to work with. So I moved the items over here. So everything that we have is stationed uh, at the uh, at the workbench. So now I just took everything out just so I can get another assessment. See, okay, what do we need to do next to maximize our time and effort here so we can finish the quickest while still getting the same um, great results. So now next is he's going to continue working on the door panels, A pillar, B pillars, and this step part, whatever it's called, um, on the passenger side. While I start on the driver's side working the seats as that's going to take a very long time. And we'll work that for a while and see how far we can get with that and then we'll adjust as needed. But that's the next step in working together on this filthy interior. Now because I'm working guys, I'm not going to be able to film everything, so I'm going to exclude the seats from this video just because I'm trying to get done quick. But just this is one part I did, um, I, as the same process as always, I sprayed APC, agitated with the polisher, and then followed it up with the steamer, and these are the results I'm getting. Uh, when I dry it, it's basically going to be the same. Sometimes if you don't dry it correctly, or if you don't, I'm sorry, if you don't wait till it's dry, you might see some stains afterwards. But me doing this enough, I already done that one. I know that these are the results I'm going to get even when it does dry. Sometimes be careful, it's going to dry if you use too much solution, too much water, or if you're using an extractor or steamer. And it's going to actually be hiding the stains. But this, I know that's how it's going to look after it's done. So just going to give you a quick licky at how it's looking so far. I even already cleaned the top part, but that's a, that's how it's looking right now. You can clearly tell that's a clean part. Everything else is still dirty. All right, I didn't record much after that. Sorry for that, but this is the wrap up of the entire vehicle. It uh, came out pretty well. Again, I mean, from the actual beginning of how we started to where we ended up now, I mean, you can't ask for more. I mean, it, it turned out very good compared to how we had it. Uh, did every stain come out? No, absolutely not. Like, look at that. Like, I touched that up a few times. You can't really tell because there's... I touched that up a few times. A few stains right there. A few stains right here. I mean, yeah, I mean, but... I mean, let's be very realistic. Like, that didn't even want to come out. But let's be very realistic. I mean, it was a... It was a terrible, ter terrible condition on how I came in. And now it is somewhat presentable. And, so, you know, the owners are going to be more... Let me scoot this up for you guys. The owners are going to be much happier with this condition because it's just not where it was when we first got here. So and there's a bunch of stains right there. There's a bunch of stains right here. And those are removed in the backside because it's not as bad. Uh, this is nice and cleaned up. Again, not perfect by any means necessary, but a huge improvement. And that's what they were going for. And realistically, I mean, when, you're, when your car is in the condition that it was, I mean, you're just looking for a huge improvement, not perfection. Um, so that's what we scored here on this vehicle. I am by no means saying this is perfect and I got every last stain out and da 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 and I'm the best detailer ever. No, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just... I'm telling you the truth and saying not everything came out perfect. That's not what I set with the ex I, I didn't set those expectations with the customer. So he wasn't looking for that anyways. But he knew that he needed a, a much better improvement overall. And yes. Alright.
door panels are cleaned up. Seats are steamed and agitated. Door panels cleaned up. Windows are cleaned up. Happy customer. Okay, now that wraps up the vehicle. Now, unfortunately, the sun came out towards the end, so it was like kind of overexposing the interior, so I couldn't get a good shot of it. That, and I was also in a big rush to leave because we were behind on time to leaving. Uh, forget the exact time, but we were supposed to be like 30 minutes before, so we were rushing, so I don't really get a good, um, I don't really get a good after as far as video. Now, with the customer, he wasn't there. He left right when I got to the location. I paid. I'm sorry, I, uh, he paid before I got started because he was going to leave. So he said, you know what, let me just pay you now. I'll give you my keys and then just drop, just leave the keys wherever I tell you uh, once you're done with the vehicle. So I did that and I told him, once I'm done, I'll take some photos and I'll send you some, photo, some, some photos to your phone just so you can get like a quick glimpse of how it's gonna look and then you can inspect it once you get there the next day, uh, once, you know, once the daylight comes up again. Uh, so I took some photos and then I sent it to him. So that's what you wanna do in your business. If, you, if they aren't gonna be there, if they're not gonna come out, then just take some photos. Just that extra level of customer service and experience to the customer uh, to really show them that you're there to care and to do what you need to do. So snap some photos, send it to them. That way they can see the results. They feel more comfortable with you and you just make them happier overall. So leave any questions, comments you have down below. Like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.